Hey, this is Presh Talwalker. Here's a slightly edited version of an email I received. I follow your YouTube channel and you are great. I've created a puzzle you might like. A cyclist ascends a long climb at a constant speed of 18 kilometers per hour. A motorcycle rally starts one minute after the cyclist. Every minute for the entire day, a motorcycle starts the same long climb and goes until it reaches the end of the climb, which is the finishing line for the motorcycles. When the cyclist reaches the top of the long climb, he arrives at the same time as the motorcycle that is reaching the finishing line. The cyclist then turns around and descends to the starting point of the climb with double the speed of his ascent. The cyclist keeps track of when motorcycles pass him. By funny coincidence, the number of motorcycles that overtook him on his ascent exactly equals the number of motorcycles that pass by him on his descent. All motorcycles have the same constant average speed. The question is, what is the speed of a motorcycle? Alessio from Italy. At first, it seems like this problem is impossible to solve. There just doesn't seem to be enough information. And yet, if you follow through the calculations carefully, you will be able to solve this problem. So, can you figure it out? Give this problem a try, and when you're ready, keep watching the video for a solution. So I'm actually going to present two different ways to solve this problem, and I do encourage you to stick with the video because the second method involving geometry is a lot of fun. I'll first go through algebraic equations, and then I'll present a geometry visualization. So let's get started with the algebra. Let's set up some notation. Let's write TA to be the time the cyclist takes in minutes for the ascent. We'll write VA for the speed of the cyclist in kilometers per minute for the ascent. We'll write TD and VD for the analogous variables for the cyclist descent. We'll also write TM and VM for the motorcycle's time and speed for the climb. We'll write S for the length of the climb, going from the bottom to the top or the top to the bottom. And we'll write N to be the number of motorcycles overtaken on the ascent or number of motorcycles passed on the descent. So with that set up, let's solve this problem. Because time is equal to distance divided by speed, TA is equal to S over VA, and TM is equal to S over VM. When the cyclist reaches the top after exactly TA minutes, he reaches at the same time as a motorcycle, which started at the bottom TM minutes prior. Hence, the last motorcycle to pass the cyclist on the way up started the race at the minute mark TA minus TM. All motorcycles starting before this time also pass the cyclist. So motorcycles leaving at minute marks 1, 2, 3, and all the way to TA minus TM all pass the cyclist. So we can conclude N is equal to TA minus TM. Now let's solve for a similar equation for N on the descent. During the descent, the cyclist will pass motorcycles for two different cases. The cyclist will pass one, all motorcycles that have already started but not yet passed the cyclist, and two, all motorcycles that started the rally during the cyclist's descent. So let's solve for each case. For the first case, notice the cyclist has taken TA minutes to ascend. So TA motorcycles started the rally during the cyclist's ascent. 
but n of these, which equals Ta minus Tm, have already passed the cyclists. So there will be Ta minus the quantity Ta minus Tm, which simplifies to be Tm motorcycles that have started but not yet passed the cyclist. Now for case two, we need to consider the time of the descent. This will be equal to the length of the climb divided by the speed of the descent. Now the speed of the descent is given to be twice the speed of the ascent. So this simplifies to be half the time of the ascent. So it will take the cyclist TD, which equals TA over two minutes to descend. So exactly another TA over two motorcycles will start the race because a motorcycle starts the race every single minute. So we add up these two cases to get N is equal to TM plus TA over two. So we now have two different expressions for N and we need to set them equal to each other. So let's go ahead and do that. We can now solve this equation for Tm in terms of Ta. We get that Tm is equal to Ta divided by four. In other words, the motorcycle completes the ascent in one fourth the time it takes the cyclist. Consequently, we can solve that the motorcycle speed is equal to four times that of the cyclist speed on the ascent. Therefore, since the cyclist ascends at 18 kilometers per hour, the motorcycle has a speed of four times 18, which is 72 kilometers per hour. And like magic, we've solved for the answer without knowing the exact number of motorcycles and without knowing the elevation of the climb. So this is one way to solve the problem, but there's another way that involves a geometry visualization. So let's plot as follows. We have time on the horizontal axis and the elevation of the person on the climb on the vertical axis. So one graph will be a linear graph to the top of the climb for the cyclist ascent. Now the remaining portion of the cyclist's trip will be the descent going back to the zero elevation. Since the cyclist has twice the descent speed, the same elevation is covered in half the time. So if the cyclist takes t minutes to ascend the climb, the cyclist takes t over two minutes to descend. So the total amount of time will be three halves t. Now what about the motorcycles? Well, every minute a motorcycle starts and goes to the top of the climb. We can visualize this as a series of lines that start every single minute and go to the top of the elevation. Each intersection of a green line and a blue line is when the motorcycle passes the cyclist. We know that there are the same number on the ascent as the descent. So there will be n lines for the ascent equally spaced at one minute apart, and there will be n lines for the descent equally spaced at one minute apart. Putting this together, we have that there will be an equal time to the left of this line and an equal time to the right of this line. The motorcycle that reaches exactly when the cyclist reaches the top, divides this graph into n minutes on the left and n minutes on the right. So this line divides the graph into two triangles of equal area because both triangles have the same base of n and the same height as the elevation of the climb. Consequently, since the entire base is three halves t, each base of the smaller triangles will be half that length, which is 3 fourths t. So each of these lengths will be 3t over 4. Now recall that the cyclist takes t minutes to reach the top and t over 2 minutes to descend. 
So we can use these values to deduce the lengths between when the motorcycle starts and reaches the top. So this particular length will be t over 4. Now how is this useful to us? Well notice that the motorcycle ascends the climb in t over 4 minutes, while the cyclist does the same ascent in a time of t. So we can use these times to deduce that the green line has a slope that's four times as large as the blue line. Therefore, the motorcycle speed is four times larger than the cyclist speed on the ascent. So it is equal to four times 18, which equals 72 kilometers per hour. So like magic, we figured out the answer geometrically. What's also nice about this geometric visualization is that it also shows why the elevation doesn't matter. The shapes and slopes will scale even if we change the elevation. So imagine we have an elevation that's shorter. Well, the entire graph is going to scale and we're still going to get the same relative speed of the motorcycle to the cycle. So for any elevation, the green line slope is four times as large as the blue line and the motorcycle speed will be four times larger to be 72 kilometers per hour. So I like this method because it's a little bit easier to see exactly what's going on and why the elevation doesn't matter. Did you figure it out? Thanks for watching this video. Please subscribe to my channel. I make videos on math. You can catch me on my blog, Mind Your Decisions. If you liked this video, you can check out my books, which are linked in the video description. You can also support me on Patreon, and you can catch me on social media, either at Mind Your Decisions or at Presh Tallwalker.